How fast do a hummingbird's wings move? Hummingbirds are the only family of birds that can truly hover in still air for any length of time. They need to do so in order to hang in front of a flower while they perform the delicate task of inserting their slim, sharp bills into its depths to drink nectar. Their thin wings are not contoured into the shape of aerofoils and do not generate lift in this way. Their paddle-shaped wings are, in effect, hands that swivel at the shoulder. They beat them in such a way that the tip of each wing follows the line of a figure 8 lying on its side. The wing moves forward and downwards into the front loop of the 8, creating lift. As it begins to come up and go back, the wing twists through 180 degrees so that once again it creates a downward thrust. The hummingbird's method of flying does have one major limitation. The smaller the wing, the faster it has to beat in order to produce sufficient downward thrust. An average sized hummingbird beats its wings 25 times per second. Small species beat their wings 50 to 80 times per second, and even faster during courtship displays. The bee hummingbird, native to Cuba, is only 2 inches, 5 centimeters. Long and beats its wings at an astonishing 200 times per second. Do any animals besides people snore? Many animals have been observed snoring occasionally, including dogs, cats, cows, oxen, sheep, buffaloes, elephants, camels, lions, leopards, tigers, gorillas, chimpanzees, horses, mules, zebras, and elands. How does a nematocyst work? A nematocyst is a specialized organelle found in all nadarians. Each nematocyst features a coiled, thread-like tube lined with a series of barbed spines. The nematocyst is used to capture prey and may also be used for defense purposes. When it is triggered to discharge, the extremely high osmotic pressure within the nematocyst 140 atmospheres, causes water to rush into the capsule. Increasing the hydrostatic pressure and expelling the thread with great force. The barb instantly penetrates the prey, stinging it with a highly toxic protein. How are birds related to dinosaurs? Birds are essentially modified dinosaurs with feathers. Robert T. Backer, 1945, and John H. Ostrom, 1928-2005, did extensive research on the relationship between birds and dinosaurs in the 1970s and concluded that the bony structure of small dinosaurs was very similar to Archaeopteryx. The first animal classified as a bird, but that dinosaur fossils showed no evidence of feathers. 
they proposed that birds and dinosaurs evolved from the same source. How are birds related to dinosaurs? Birds are essentially modified dinosaurs with feathers. Robert T. Backer, 1945, and John H. Ostrom, 1928-2005, did extensive research on the relationship between birds and dinosaurs in the 1970s and concluded that the bony structure of small dinosaurs was very similar to Archaeopteryx. The first animal classified as a bird, but that dinosaur fossils showed no evidence of feathers. They proposed that birds and dinosaurs evolved from the same source. Why is Archaeopteryx important? Archaeopteryx is the first known bird. It had true feathers that provided insulation and allowed this animal to form scoops with its wings for catching prey. Why is Archaeopteryx important? Archaeopteryx is the first known bird. It had true feathers that provided insulation and allowed this animal to form scoops with its wings for catching prey. How sensitive is the hearing of birds? In most species of birds, the most important sense after sight is hearing. Birds' ears are close to their bodies and are covered by feathers. The feathers, however, do not have barbules, which would obstruct sound. Nocturnal raptors, such as the great horned owl, have a very well-developed sense of hearing in order to be able to capture their prey in total darkness. How sensitive is the hearing of birds? In most species of birds, the most important sense after sight is hearing. Birds' ears are close to their bodies and are covered by feathers. The feathers, however, do not have barbules, which would obstruct sound. Nocturnal raptors, such as the great horned owl, have a very well-developed sense of hearing in order to be able to capture their prey in total darkness. How do birds learn to sing the distinctive melody of their respective species? The ability to learn the proper song appears to be influenced by both heredity and experience. Scientists have speculated that a bird is genetically programmed with the ability to recognize the song of its own species and with the tendency to learn its own song. As a bird begins to sing, it goes through a stage of practice, which closely resembles the babbling of human infants.
through which it perfects the notes and structure of its distinctive song. In order to produce a perfect imitation, the bird must apparently hear the song from an adult during its first months of life. How do birds learn to sing the distinctive melody of their respective species? The ability to learn the proper song appears to be influenced by both heredity and experience. Scientists have speculated that a bird is genetically programmed with the ability to recognize the song of its own species and with the tendency to learn its own song. As a bird begins to sing, it goes through a stage of practice, which closely resembles the babbling of human infants, through which it perfects the notes and structure of its distinctive song. In order to produce a perfect imitation, the bird must apparently hear the song from an adult during its first months of life. What is unusual about the way the emperor penguin's eggs are incubated? Each female emperor penguin Aptenidites first terry, lays one large egg. Initially, both sexes share in incubating the egg by carrying it on his or her feet and covering it with a fold of skin. After a few days of passing the egg back and forth, the female leaves to feed in the open water of the Arctic Ocean. Balancing their eggs on their feet, the male penguins shuffle about the rookery. Periodically huddling together for warmth during blizzards and frigid weather. If an egg is inadvertently orphaned, a male with no egg will quickly adopt it. Two months after the female's departure, the chick hatches. The male feeds it with a milky substance he regurgitates until the female returns. Now padded with blubber. The females take over feeding the chicks with fish they have stored in their crops. The females do not return to their mate, however. But wander from male to male until one allows her to take his chick. It is then the male's turn to feed in open water and restore the fat layer they lost while incubating. What is unusual about the way the emperor penguin's eggs are incubated? Each female emperor penguin, Aptenidites first terry, lays one large egg. Initially, both sexes share in incubating the egg by carrying it on his or her feet and covering it with a fold of skin. After a few days of passing the egg back and forth, the female leaves to feed in the open water of the Arctic Ocean. Balancing their eggs on their feet, the male penguins shuffle about the rookery. Periodically huddling together for warmth during blizzards and frigid weather. If an egg is inadvertently orphaned, a male with no egg will quickly adopt it. Two months after the female's departure, the chick hatches. The male feeds it with a milky substance he regurgitates until the female returns. Now padded with blubber. 
the females take over feeding the chicks with fish they have stored in their crops. The females do not return to their mate, however, but wander from male to male until one allows her to take his chick. It is then the male's turn to feed in open water and restore the fat layer they lost while incubating. Which birds lay the largest and smallest eggs? The elephant bird, Epiornis maximus, an extinct flightless bird of Madagascar. Also known as the giant bird or rock, laid the largest known bird eggs. Some of these eggs measured as much as 13.5 inches, 34 centimeters. In length and 9.5 inches, 24 centimeters, in diameter. The largest egg produced by any living bird is that of the North African ostrich, Struthio camelus. The average size is 6 to 8 inches, 15 to 20.5 centimeters. In length and 4 to 6 inches, 5 to 15 centimeters, in diameter. The smallest mature egg, measuring less than 0.39 inch, 1 centimeter. In length, is that of the vervain hummingbird, Melisuga minima, of Jamaica. Generally speaking, the larger the bird, the larger the egg. However, when compared with the bird's body size, the ostrich egg is one of the smallest eggs. While the hummingbird's egg is one of the largest. The kiwi bird of New Zealand lays the largest egg. Relative to body size. Of any living bird. Kiwis are comparable to chickens in size, but their eggs are comparable to ostrich eggs in size. The egg of a brown kiwi is 14 to 20 percent of the female's body weight. Its egg weighs up to one pound. 0.5 kilogram Which birds lay the largest and smallest eggs? The elephant bird, Epiornis maximus, an extinct flightless bird of Madagascar. Also known as the giant bird or rock, laid the largest known bird eggs. Some of these eggs measured as much as 13.5 inches, 34 centimeters. In length and 9.5 inches, 24 centimeters, in diameter. The largest egg produced by any living bird is that of the North African ostrich, Struthio camelus. The average size is 6 to 8 inches, 15 to 20.5 centimeters. In length and 4 to 6 inches, 5 to 15 centimeters, in diameter. The smallest mature egg, measuring less than 0.39 inch, 1 centimeter. In length, is that of the vervain hummingbird, Melisuga minima, of Jamaica. Generally speaking, the larger the bird, the larger the egg. However, when compared with the bird's body size, the ostrich egg is one of the smallest eggs. While the hummingbird's egg is one of the largest. The kiwi bird of New Zealand lays the largest egg. Relative to body size. Of any living bird. Kiwis are comparable to chickens in size, 
but their eggs are comparable to ostrich eggs in size. The egg of a brown kiwi is 14 to 20 percent of the female's body weight. Its egg weighs up to 1 pound, 0.5 kilogram. What are the natural predators of the penguin? The leopard seal, Hydrarga leptonix, is the principal predator of both the adult and juvenile penguin. The penguin may also be caught by a killer whale while swimming in open water. Eggs and chicks that are not properly guarded by adults are often devoured by skuas and sheath bills. What are the natural predators of the penguin? The leopard seal, Hydrarga leptonix, is the principal predator of both the adult and juvenile penguin. The penguin may also be caught by a killer whale while swimming in open water. Eggs and chicks that are not properly guarded by adults are often devoured by skuas and sheath bills. Why don't woodpeckers get headaches? Woodpeckers' skulls are particularly sturdy to withstand. The force of the blows as they hammer with their beaks. They are further aided by strong neck muscles to support their heads. Why don't woodpeckers get headaches? Woodpeckers' skulls are particularly sturdy to withstand. The force of the blows as they hammer with their beaks. They are further aided by strong neck muscles to support their heads. How does a homing pigeon find its way home? Scientists currently have two hypotheses to explain the homing flight of pigeons. Neither has been proved to the satisfaction of all the experts. The first hypothesis involves an odor map. This theory proposes that young pigeons learn how to return to their original point of departure by smelling different odors that reach their home in the winds from varying directions. They would, for example, learn that a certain odor is carried on winds blowing from the east. If a pigeon were transported eastward, the odor would tell it to fly westward to return home. The second hypothesis proposes that a bird may be able to extract its home's latitude and longitude from Earth's magnetic field. It may be proven in the future that neither theory explains the pigeons. Navigational abilities or that some synthesis of the two theories is plausible. How does a homing pigeon find its way home? Scientists currently have two hypotheses to explain the homing flight of pigeons. 
neither has been proved to the satisfaction of all the experts. The first hypothesis involves an odor map. This theory proposes that young pigeons learn how to return to their original point of departure by smelling different odors that reach their home in the winds from varying directions. They would, for example, learn that a certain odor is carried on winds blowing from the east. If a pigeon were transported eastward, the odor would tell it to fly westward to return home. The second hypothesis proposes that a bird may be able to extract its home's latitude and longitude from Earth's magnetic field. It may be proven in the future that neither theory explains the pigeons navigational abilities or that some synthesis of the two theories is plausible. What is the name of the bird that perches on the black rhinoceros's back? The bird, a relative of the starling, is called an oxpecker, a member of the Sternidae family. Found only in Africa, the yellow-billed oxpecker, Bufagus africanus, is widespread over much of western and central Africa, while the red-billed oxpecker, Bufagus erythroincus, lives in eastern Africa from the Red Sea to Natal. 7 to 8 inches, 17 to 20 centimeters, long with a coffee brown body. The oxpecker feeds on more than 20 species of ticks that live in the height of the black rhinoceros. Dicerus bicornis, also called the hook-lipped rhino. The bird spends most of its time on the rhinoceros or on other animals, such as the antelope, zebra, giraffe, or buffalo. The bird has even been known to roost on the body of its host. The relationship between the oxpecker and the rhinoceros is a type of symbiosis. A close association between two organisms in which at least one of them benefits, called mutualism. The rhinoceros relief of its ticks and the bird's feeding clearly demonstrates mutualism. A condition in which both organisms benefit. In addition, the oxpecker, having much better eyesight than the nearsighted rhinoceros, alerts its host with its shrill cries and flight when danger approaches. What is the name of the bird that perches on the black rhinoceros's back? The bird, a relative of the starling, is called an oxpecker, a member of the Sternidae family. Found only in Africa, the yellow-billed oxpecker, Bufagus africanus is widespread over much of western and central Africa, while the red-billed oxpecker Bufagus erythroincus, lives in eastern Africa from the Red Sea to Natal. 7 to 8 inches, 17 to 20 centimeters, long with a coffee brown body. The oxpecker feeds on more than 20 species of ticks that live in the height of the black rhinoceros. Dicerus bicornis, also called the hook-lipped rhino. The bird spends most of its time on the rhinoceros or on other animals, such as the antelope, zebra, giraffe, or buffalo. The bird has even been known to roost on the body of its host. The relationship 
between the oxpecker and the rhinoceros is a type of symbiosis. A close association between two organisms in which at least one of them benefits, called mutualism. The rhinoceros relief of its ticks and the birds feeding clearly demonstrates mutualism. A condition in which both organisms benefit. In addition, the oxpecker, having much better eyesight than the nearsighted rhinoceros, alerts its host with its shrill cries and flight when danger approaches. Why don't birds get electrocuted when they sit on wires? In general, birds do not get electrocuted while just sitting on power transmission wires. Most electrocutions happen when a bird opens its wingspan and completes a circuit by bridging the gap between two live wires or a live wire and a grounded wire or other parts such as transformers and grounded metal cross arms. Why don't birds get electrocuted when they sit on wires? In general, birds do not get electrocuted while just sitting on power transmission wires. Most electrocutions happen when a bird opens its wingspan and completes a circuit by bridging the gap between two live wires or a live wire and a grounded wire or other parts such as transformers and grounded metal cross arms. Which state was the first to officially name a state bird? In 1926, Kentucky officially named the cardinal as its state bird. Which state was the first to officially name a state bird? In 1926, Kentucky officially named the cardinal as its state bird. Why are leeches important in the field of medicine? Leeches have been used in the practice of medicine since ancient times. During the 1800s leeches were widely used for bloodletting because of the mistaken idea that body disorders and fevers were caused by an excess of blood. Leech collecting and culture were practiced on a commercial scale during this time. William Wadsworth's 1770-1850 poem The Leech Gatherer was based on this use of leeches. The medical leech, Hirudo medicinalis, is used to remove blood that has accumulated within tissues as a result of injury or disease. Leeches have also been applied to fingers or toes that have been surgically reattached to the body. The sucking by the leech unclogs small blood vessels. Permitting blood to flow normally again through the body part. The leech releases hirudin, secreted by the salivary glands. 
which is an anticoagulant that prevents blood from clotting and dissolves pre-existing clots. Other salivary ingredients dilate blood vessels and act as an anesthetic. A medicinal leech can absorb as much as 5 to 10 times its body weight in blood. Complete digestion of this blood takes a long time. And these leeches feed only once or twice a year in this manner. Which state was the first to officially name a state bird? In 1926, Kentucky officially named the cardinal as its state bird. Why don't woodpeckers get headaches? Woodpeckers' skulls are particularly sturdy to withstand. The force of the blows as they hammer with their beaks. They are further aided by strong neck muscles to support their heads. What are the most common tapeworm infections in humans? Tapeworms, members of the class Cestida, have long, flat bodies in which there is a linear series of sets of reproductive organs. Each set or segment is called a proglottid. How does a homing pigeon find its way home? Scientists currently have two hypotheses to explain the homing flight of pigeons. Neither has been proved to the satisfaction of all the experts. The first hypothesis involves an odor map. This theory proposes that young pigeons learn how to return to their original point of Departure by smelling different odors that reach their home in the winds from varying directions. They would, for example, learn that a certain odor is carried on winds blowing from the east. If a pigeon were transported eastward, the odor would tell it to fly westward to return home. The second hypothesis proposes that a bird may be able to extract its home's latitude and longitude from Earth's magnetic field. It may be proven in the future that neither theory explains the pigeons' navigational abilities or that some synthesis of the two theories is plausible. What three groups are included in the flapworms? Flatworms belong to the phylum platyhelminthes. They are flat, elongated, achylomate animals that exhibit bilateral symmetry and have primitive organs. The members of the flatworms are, 1, planar eons, 2, flukes, and 3, tapeworms. Is the whale shark a mammal or a fish? The whale shark, Rhynchodon typhus, 
is a shark, not a whale. It is, therefore, a fish. This species name merely indicates that it is the largest of all shark species. Weighing 40,000 pounds 18,144 kilograms or more and growing. To lengths of 49 feet 15 meters or more, and the largest fish species in the world. However, it is completely harmless to humans. How much electricity does an electric eel generate? An electric eel, Electrophorus electricus, has current producing organs made up of electric plates on both sides of its vertebral column running almost its entire body length. The charge on the average of 350 volts. But as great as 550 volts is released by the central nervous system. The shock consists of 4 to 8 separate charges. Which last only 2 to 3 thousandths of a second each. These shocks, used as a defense mechanism can be repeated up to 150 times per hour without any visible fatigue to the eel. The most powerful electric eel, found in the rivers of Brazil, Colombia, Venezuela, and Peru, produces a shock of 400 to 650 volts. What are the major groups of segmented worms? Members of the phylum Anlida, the segmented worms have bilateral symmetry and a tubular body that may have 100 to 175 ring like segments. The three classes of segmented worms are, 1, polychaeta, the sandworms, and tube worms. 2, oligochaeta, the earthworms, and 3, hirudinia, the leeches. At what speeds do fishes swim? The maximum swimming speed of a fish is somewhat determined by the shape of its body and tail and by its internal temperature. The cosmopolitan sailfish, Istiophorus platypterus, is considered to be the fastest fish species. At least for short distances, swimming at greater than 60 miles, 95 kilometers, per hour. Some American fishermen believe, however, that the bluefin tuna, Thunnus thinnus, is the fastest, but the fastest speed recorded for them so far is 43.4 miles, 69.8 kilometers, per hour. Data is extremely difficult to secure because of the practical difficulties in measuring the speeds. The yellowfin tuna, Thunnus albicares, and the Waoi, Acanthosibium solandri, are also fast. Timed at 46.35 miles, 74.5 kilometers, per hour and 47.88 miles, 77 kilometers, per hour during 10 to 20 second sprints. Flying fish swim at more than 40 miles, over 64 kilometers per hour, dolphins at 37 miles, 60 kilometers per hour, 
Trout at 15 miles, 24 kilometers per hour, and Blenny at 5 miles, 8 kilometers per hour. Humans can swim 5.19 miles, 8.3 kilometers per hour. What is the most famous roundworm? One soil nematode, Sonorabditus elegans, is widely cultured and has become a model research organism in developmental biology. The study of this animal was begun in 1963 by Sidney Brenner. 1927 who received the nobel prize in physiology or medicine in 2002 the species normally lives in soil but is easily grown in the laboratory in petri dishes it is only about 0.06 inch 1.5 millimeters long has a simple transparent body consisting of only 959 cells and grows from zygote to mature adult in only three and a half days the genome genetic material of c elegans consisting of 14,000 genes was the first animal genome to be completely mapped and sequenced the small transparent body of this nematode allows researchers to locate cells in which a specific developmentally important gene is active. These cells show up as bright green spots in a photograph because they have been genetically engineered to produce a green fluorescent protein known as GFP. The complete wiring diagram of its nervous system is known, including all the neurons and all connections between them. Much of the knowledge of nematode genetics and development gained from the study of C. Elegans is transferable to the study of other animals. What is the difference between a reptile and an amphibian? Reptiles are clad in scales, shields, or plates, and their toes have claws. Amphibians have moist, glandular skins, and their toes lack claws. Reptile eggs have a thick, hard, or parchment-like shell that protects the developing embryo from moisture loss, even on dry land. The eggs of amphibians lack this protective outer covering and are always laid in water or in damp places. Young reptiles are miniature replicas of their parents in general appearance if not always in coloration and pattern juvenile amphibians pass through a larval usually aquatic stage before they metamorphose change in form and structure into the adult form reptiles include alligators crocodiles turtles and snakes Amphibians include salamanders, toads, and frogs. Is coral bleaching related to changes in the environment? Although corals can capture prey. Many tropical species are dependent on photosynthetic algae, zooxanthellae, for nutrition. 
These algae live within the cells that line the digestive cavity of the coral. The symbiotic relationship between coral and zooxanthellae is mutually beneficial. The algae provide the coral with oxygen and carbon and nitrogen compounds. The coral supplies the algae with ammonia, waste product. From which the algae make nitrogenous compounds for both partners. Coral bleaching is the stress induced loss of zooxanthellae that live in coral cells. In coral bleaching, the algae lose their pigmentation or are expelled from coral cells. Without the algae, coral become malnourished and die. The causes of coral bleaching are not completely understood. But it is believed that environmental factors are involved. Pollution, invasive bacteria such as Vibrio, salinity changes, temperature changes. And high concentrations of ultraviolet radiation. Associated with the destruction of the ozone layer, all contribute to coral bleaching. How do birds learn to sing the distinctive melody of their respective species? The ability to learn the proper song appears to be influenced by both heredity and experience. Scientists have speculated that a bird is genetically programmed with the ability to recognize the song of its own species and with the tendency to learn its own song. As a bird begins to sing, it goes through a stage of practice, which closely resembles the babbling of human infants. Through which it perfects the notes and structure of its distinctive song. In order to produce a perfect imitation, the bird must apparently hear the song from an adult during its first months of life. What are the natural predators of the penguin? The leopard seal, Hydrarga leptinix, is the principal predator of both the adult and juvenile penguin. The penguin may also be caught by a killer whale while swimming in open water. Eggs and chicks that are not properly guarded by adults are often devoured by skuas and sheath bills. What features of reptiles enabled them to become true land vertebrates? Legs were arranged to support the body's weight more effectively than in amphibians. Allowing reptile bodies to be larger and to run. Reptilian lungs were more developed with a greatly increased surface area for gas exchange than the sac-like lungs of amphibians. The three-chambered heart of reptiles was more efficient than the three-chambered amphibian heart. In addition, the skin was covered with hard, dry scales to minimize water loss. However, the most important evolutionary adaptation was the amniotic egg in which an embryo could survive and develop on land. The eggs were surrounded by a protective shell that prevented the developing embryo from drying out. How sensitive is the hearing of birds?
In most species of birds, the most important sense after sight is hearing. Birds' ears are close to their bodies and are covered by feathers. The feathers, however, do not have barbules, which would obstruct sound. Nocturnal raptors, such as the great horned owl, have a very well-developed sense of hearing in order to be able to capture their prey in total darkness. How far from shore do shark attacks occur? In a study of 570 shark attacks, it was found that most shark attacks occur near shore. These data are not surprising since most people who enter the water stay close to the shore. What does the word amphibian mean? The word amphibian, from the Greek term amphibia, means both lives and refers to the animal's double life on land and in water. The usual life cycle of amphibians begins with eggs laid in water, which develop into aquatic larvae with external gills, in a development that recapitulates its evolution. The fish-like larva develops lungs and limbs and becomes an adult. How are birds related to dinosaurs? Birds are essentially modified dinosaurs with feathers. Robert T. Backer, 1945, and John H. Ostrom, 1928-2005, did extensive research on the relationship between birds and dinosaurs in the 1970s and concluded that the bony structure of small dinosaurs was very similar to Archaeopteryx. The first animal classified as a bird, but that dinosaur fossils showed no evidence of feathers. They proposed that birds and dinosaurs evolved from the same source. What is the largest leech? Most leeches are between 0.75 inch and 2 inches, 2 and 6 centimeters in length, but some medicinal leeches reach 8 inches, 20 centimeters. The giant of all leeches is the Amazonian Hemantherium galanii, from the Greek term hymateros, meaning bloody, which reaches 12 inches, 30 centimeters in length. Why don't birds get electrocuted when they sit on wires? In general, birds do not get electrocuted while just sitting on power transmission wires. Most electrocutions happen when a bird opens its wingspan and completes a circuit by bridging the gap between two live wires or a live wire and a grounded wire or other parts such as transformers and grounded metal cross arms.
which birds lay the largest and smallest eggs. The elephant bird, Ap Ornus maximus, an extinct flightless bird of Madagascar. Also known as the giant bird or rock, laid the largest known bird eggs. Some of these eggs measured as much as 13.5 inches, 34 centimeters. In length and 9.5 inches, 24 centimeters, in diameter. The largest egg produced by any living bird is that of the North African ostrich, Struthio camelus. The average size is 6 to 8 inches, 15 to 20.5 centimeters. In length and 4 to 6 inches, 5 to 15 centimeters, in diameter. The smallest mature egg, measuring less than 0.39 inch, 1 centimeter. In length, is that of the vervain hummingbird, Melisuga minima, of Jamaica. Generally speaking, the larger the bird, the larger the egg. However, when compared with the bird's body size, the ostrich egg is one of the smallest eggs. While the hummingbird's egg is one of the largest. The kiwi bird of New Zealand lays the largest egg. Relative to body size. Of any living bird. Kiwis are comparable to chickens in size, but their eggs are comparable to ostrich eggs in size. The egg of a brown kiwi is 14 to 20 percent of the female's body weight. Its egg weighs up to one pound, 0.5 kilogram. What general characteristics do all fishes have in common? All fishes have the following characteristics, 1, gills that extract oxygen from water. 2, an internal skeleton with a skin that surrounds the dorsal nerve cord. 3, single loop blood circulation in which the blood is pumped from the heart to the gills and then to the rest of the body before returning to the heart. 4, nutritional deficiencies particularly some amino acids that must be consumed and cannot be synthesized. What is unusual about the way the emperor penguin's eggs are incubated? Each female emperor penguin Aptenidites furs terry, lays one large egg. Initially, both sexes share in incubating the egg by carrying it on his or her feet and covering it with a fold of skin. After a few days of passing the egg back and forth, the female leaves to feed in the open water of the Arctic Ocean. Balancing their eggs on their feet, the male penguins shuffle about the rookery. Periodically huddling together for warmth during blizzards and frigid weather. If an egg is inadvertently orphaned, a male with no egg will quickly adopt it. Two months after the female's departure, the chick hatches. The male feeds it with a milky substance he regurgitates until the female returns. Now padded with blubber. The females take over feeding the chicks with fish they have stored in their crops. 
The females do not return to their mate, however, but wander from male to male until one allows her to take his chick. It is then the male's turn to feed in open water and restore the fat layer they lost while incubating. What are the major groups of mollusks? There are four major groups of mollusks, one, chitons, two, gastropods, which includes nails, slugs, and nudibranchs, three, bivalves, which include clams. Oysters and mussels, and four cephalopods, which include squids and octopods. Although mollusks vary widely in external appearance, most share the following body plan 1. A muscular foot, usually used for movement, 2. A visceral mass containing most of the internal organs, and 3. A mantle fold of tissue that drapes over the visceral mass and secretes a shell, in organisms that have a shell. In what ways are earthworms beneficial? Earthworms help maintain fertile soil. An earthworm literally eats its way through soil and decaying vegetation. As it moves about, the soil is turned, aerated, and enriched by nitrogenous wastes. Charles Darwin, 1809-1882, calculated that a single earthworm could eat its own weight in soil every day. Much of what is eaten is then excreted on Earth's surface in the form of casts. The worms then rebury these casts with their burrowing process. In addition, Darwin claimed that 2.5 acres, 1 hectare, of soil might contain 155,000 earthworms, which in one year would bring 18 tons of soil to the surface and in 20 years might build a new layer 3 inches, 11 centimeters, thick. What is the name of the bird that perches on the black rhinoceros's back? The bird, a relative of the starling, is called an oxpecker, a member of the Sternidae family. Found only in Africa, the yellow-billed oxpecker, Bufagus africanus is widespread over much of western and central Africa, while the red-billed oxpecker Bufagus erythroincus, lives in eastern Africa from the Red Sea to Natal. 7 to 8 inches, 17 to 20 centimeters, long with a coffee brown body. The oxpecker feeds on more than 20 species of ticks that live in the height of the black rhinoceros. Dicerus bicornis, also called the hook-lipped rhino. The bird spends most of its time on the rhinoceros or on other animals, such as the antelope, zebra, giraffe, or buffalo. The bird has even been known to roost on the body of its host. The relationship between the oxpecker and the rhinoceros is a type of symbiosis. A close association between two organisms in which at least one of them benefits, called mutualism. The rhinoceros relief of its ticks and the birds feeding clearly demonstrates mutualism. 
a condition in which both organisms benefit. In addition, the oxpecker, having much better eyesight than the nearsighted rhinoceros, alerts its host with its shrill cries and flight when danger approaches. How numerous are roundworms? Roundworms, or nematodes, are members of the phylum nematoda, from the Greek term nematos, meaning thread, and are numerous in two respects. 1. Number of known and potential species, and 2. The total number of these organisms in a habitat. Approximately 12,000 species of nematodes have been named but it has been estimated that if all species were known, the number would be closer to 500. 000 nematodes live in a variety of habitats ranging from the sea to soil. 6 cubic inches, 100 cubic centimeters, of soil may contain several thousand nematodes. A square yard, 0.85 square meter, of woodland or agricultural soil may contain several million of them. Good topsoil may contain billions of nematodes per acre. How do fishes swimming in a school change their direction simultaneously? He movement, which confuses predators, happens because fish detect pressure changes in the water. The detection system, called the lateral line, is found along each side of the fish's body. Along the line are clusters of tiny hairs inside cups filled with a jelly-like substance. If a fish becomes alarmed and turns sharply, it causes a pressure wave in the water around it. This wave pressure deforms the jelly in the lateral line of nearby fish. This moves the hairs that trigger nerves, and a signal is sent to the brain telling the fish to turn. What is unusual about the teeth of sharks? Sharks were among the first vertebrates to develop teeth. The teeth are not set into the jaw but rather sit atop it. They are not firmly anchored and are easily lost. The teeth are arranged in 6 to 20 rows. With the ones in front doing the biting and cutting. Behind these teeth, others grow. When a tooth breaks or is worn down. A replacement moves forward. One shark may eventually develop and use more than 20,000 teeth in a lifetime. What gives coral their colors? Coral have a symbiotic relationship with zooxanthellae. Zooxanthellae are photosynthetic dinoflagellates, one-celled animals, that give coral their characteristic colors of pink, purple, and green. Coral that have expelled the zooxanthellae appear white. How fast does a snail move?
Many snails move at a speed of less than 3 inches, 8 centimeters, per minute. This means that if a snail did not stop to rest or eat, it could travel 16 feet, 4.8 meters, per hour. How is the age of a fish determined? One way to determine the age of a fish is by its scales, which have growth rings just as trees do. Scales have concentric bony ridges or circuli, which reflect the growth patterns of the individual fish. The portion of the scale that is embedded in the skin contains clusters of these ridges. Called annuli, each cluster marks one year's growth cycle. Why is Archaeopteryx important? Archaeopteryx is the first known bird. It had true feathers that provided insulation and allowed this animal to form scoops with its wings for catching prey. What groups of reptiles are living today? The three orders of reptiles that are alive today are, 1, Chelonia, which includes turtles, terrapins, and tortoises, 2, Squamata, which includes lizards and snakes and 3, Crocodilia, which includes crocodiles and alligators. When was the bald eagle adopted as the national bird of the United States? On June 20th, 1782, the citizens of the newly independent United States of America adopted the bald or American eagle as their national emblem. At first the heraldic artists depicted a bird that could have been a member of any of the larger species. But by 1902, the bird portrayed on the seal of the United States of America had assumed its proper white plumage on the head and tail. The choice of the bald eagle was not unanimous. Benjamin Franklin, 1706 to 1790, preferred the wild turkey. Oftentimes a tongue-in-cheek humorist, Franklin thought the turkey a wily but brave, intelligent, and prudent bird. He viewed the eagle on the other hand as having a bad moral character and not getting his living honestly. Preferring instead to steal fish from hard-working fish hawks. He also found the eagle a coward that readily flees. From the irritating attacks of the much smaller king bird. When was the bald eagle adopted as the national bird of the United States? On June 20, 1782, the citizens of the newly independent United States of America adopted the bald or American eagle as their national emblem. At first the heraldic artists depicted a bird that could have been a member of any of the larger species. But by 1902, the bird portrayed on the seal of the United 
states of America had assumed its proper white plumage on the head and tail. The choice of the bald eagle was not unanimous, Benjamin Franklin, 1706-1790, preferred the wild turkey. Oftentimes a tongue-in-cheek humorist, Franklin thought the turkey a wily but brave, intelligent and prudent bird. He viewed the eagle on the other hand as having a bad moral character and not getting his living honestly. Preferring instead to steal fish from hard-working fish hawks. He also found the eagle a coward that readily flees. From the irritating attacks of the much smaller king bird. Which mammals have the shortest gestation periods? Gestation is the period of time between fertilization and birth in oviparous animals. The shortest gestation period known is 12 to 13 days, shared by three marsupials. The American or Virginian opossum, Didelphys marsupialis, the rare water opossum, or Yapak, Chironectes minimus. Of Central and Northern South America, and the Eastern native cat, Dossi urus viverinus, of Australia. The young of each of these marsupials are born while still immature and complete their development in the ventral pouch of their mother. While 12 to 13 days is the average, the gestation period is sometimes as short as 8 days. The longest gestation period for a mammal is that of the African elephant. Loxodonta africana, with an average of 660 days, and a maximum of 760 days. Which mammals have the shortest gestation periods? Gestation is the period of time between fertilization and birth in oviparous animals. The shortest gestation period known is 12 to 13 days, shared by three marsupials. The American or Virginian opossum, Didelphys marsupialis, the rare water opossum, or Yapak, Chironectes minimus. Of Central and Northern South America, and the Eastern native cat, Dossi urus viverinus, of Australia. The young of each of these marsupials are born while still immature and complete their development in the ventral pouch of their mother. While 12 to 13 days is the average, the gestation period is sometimes as short as 8 days. The longest gestation period for a mammal is that of the African elephant. Loxodonta africana, with an average of 660 days, and a maximum of 760 days. Do any mammals fly? Bats, order Chiroptera with 986 species, are the only truly flying mammals. Although several gliding mammals are referred to as flying, such as the flying squirrel and flying lemur. The wings of bats are double membranes of skin stretching from the sides of the body to the hind legs and tail. And are actually skin extensions of the back and belly. The wing membranes are supported by the elongated fingers of the forelimbs, 
or arms. Nocturnal, active at night, ranging in length from 1.5 inches, 25 millimeters, to 1.3 feet, 40.6 centimeters, and living in caves or crevices. Bats inhabit most of the temperate and tropical regions of both hemispheres. The majority of species feed on insects and fruit. While some tropical species eat pollen and nectar of flowers, and insects found inside them. Moderate-sized species usually prey on small mammals, birds, lizards, and frogs, and some eat fish. But true vampire bats, three species, eat the blood of animals by making an incision in the animal's skin from these bats, animals can contract rabies. Most bats do not find their way around by sight but have evolved a sonar system called echolocation, for locating solid objects. Bats emit vocal sounds through the nose or mouth while flying. These sounds, usually above the human hearing range, are reflected back as echoes. This method enables bats, when flying in darkness, to avoid solid objects and to locate the position of flying insects. Bats have the most acute sense of hearing of any land animal. Hearing frequencies as high as 120 to 210 kHz. The highest frequency humans can hear is 20 kHz. Do any mammals fly? Bats, order Chiroptera with 986 species, are the only truly flying mammals. Although several gliding mammals are referred to as flying, such as the flying squirrel and flying lemur. The wings of bats are double membranes of skin stretching from the sides of the body to the hind legs and tail. And are actually skin extensions of the back and belly. The wing membranes are supported by the elongated fingers of the forelimbs, or arms. Nocturnal, active at night, ranging in length from 1.5 inches, 25 millimeters to 1.3 feet, 40.6 centimeters, and living in caves or crevices. Bats inhabit most of the temperate and tropical regions of both hemispheres. The majority of species feed on insects and fruit. While some tropical species eat pollen and nectar of flowers, and insects found inside them. Moderate-sized species usually prey on small mammals, birds, lizards, and frogs, and some eat fish. But true vampire bats, three species, eat the blood of animals by making an incision in the animal's skin from these bats, animals can contract rabies. Most bats do not find their way around by sight but have evolved a sonar system called echolocation, for locating solid objects. Bats emit vocal sounds through the nose or mouth while flying. These sounds, usually above the human hearing range, are reflected back as echoes. This method enables bats, when flying in darkness, to avoid solid objects and to locate the position of flying insects. Bats have the most acute sense of hearing of any land animal. 
hearing frequencies as high as 120 to 210 kHz. The highest frequency humans can hear is 20 kHz. What are the only mammals that cannot jump? It might not be surprising to learn that neither the rhinoceros nor the elephant can jump. Since their enormous weight makes the feat difficult. However, the third mammal that cannot jump is the pronghorn sheep. Which was called an antelope in the famous song Home on the Range. The pronghorn sheep's inability to jump has been a particular disadvantage in its North American home. Where fences have prevented populations from migrating and hindered the pronghorn's ability to find mates and breed. What are the only mammals that cannot jump? It might not be surprising to learn that neither the rhinoceros nor the elephant can jump. Since their enormous weight makes the feat difficult. However, the third mammal that cannot jump is the pronghorn sheep. Which was called an antelope in the famous song Home on the Range. The pronghorn sheep's inability to jump has been a particular disadvantage in its North American home. Where fences have prevented populations from migrating and hindered the pronghorn's ability to find mates and breed. <laughs>